Welcome. Today, let's do multiplication. Let's do multiplication in a very strange way. I'll do a method that's called line multiplication. Uh, for example, let's work out 13 times 22. It's best to explain it with the example. So what I'm going to do here is represent 13 as a set of lines. I'll do one line for the 1 in the 13, and three lines for the 3 in 13. So there is 1, 3, 13. For the 22, I'll represent it as vertical lines each digit at a time. For the first digit of 2, there's two vertical lines. For the second digit of 2, there's another two vertical lines. And what I'm going to do now is count up intersections. So in the, over here I see a little cluster of six intersections. Over here I see another cluster of six intersections. Over here I see a cluster of two and a cluster of two. And what I'm going to do is add up these clusters diagonally. What do I mean by that? So there's one group, which I'm going to say is a little diagonal of six intersections. These two clusters make a diagonal clusters, which add up to two and six, is eight intersections in total. And this is a little cluster of months itself in a diagonal of 2. And I claim 286 is the answer to the multiplication problem 13 times 22. Whoa. It's actually right. Uh, let's do another example. So let me just clear this one from the board. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's try, um, I'll still keep the numbers low, so I'm not drawing thousands and thousands of lines, but we'll do something like 131 times 122. Here goes. Let's represent the number 131. It's a digit of 1, a digit of 3, and a digit of 1. one. It's a digit of 1, 2, 2. OK. I'll be a little bit faster with the, the diagonals this time. Here's one cluster of, of uh, intersections. I can see it's just two intersections, 1, 2. These two clusters make their own diagonal. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 intersections in that diagonal. This is a diagonal of clusters like this. I see 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 8, and one more makes 9. Here's the next diagonal of clusters of intersections. There's 2 and 3, makes a total of 5 on that diagonal, and 1 for that diagonal is 1. And I claim the answer is 15,982. And it's right. Very weird. Um, before explaining what's going on, um, there is one complication with this. The fact that you notice I was using the digits 1, 2, and 3. Um, if I get more bigger digits than that, I might have to do some carrying. So let's see what happens with the carrying example. Let's do something like 32 times 246. All right, it's going to be a bit, a bit messy, but let's go for it. 30 is three lines. 32 is 32. All right, 200 is 2, 4, and oh, 6, I put myself top row. 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, there it is, that's set up. All you have to do now is count intersections and add them up diagonally. All right, here's its own cluster of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 intersections. In this diagonal, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that's 18, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 18, and 8, that's 26 intersections in that diagonal. In this diagonal of clusters, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, that's 12, 1, 2, 1, 2, that's 16, and this final cluster has uh, 6. The answer is 6,000, 1,620, 60, Alright, most people don't like to say 12 ones and 26 tens and 1,600s, they have to carry. So let's carry this one over to here and make that 27. Alright, 6,620, 72. Alright, let's carry this 2 over and make this not 16, make it 18. 6,872. Kind of sounds okay, but most people like to carry that one over and make that seven, seven thousand eight hundred and seventy-two. Whoa, and that's right. All right, so if you're willing to do the carrying, this intersection method, this line method, works beautifully. All right, so here's the question: Why on earth is this working? Well, obviously, I explained this in uh, chapter one of my uh, book, Thinking Mathematics, uh, volume one. Um, I actually do lots of different weird multiplications out there, but this is a particularly cool one. Uh, to explain what's going on, let's let's go back to the very first example. Let's see if I can bring it up. It was 13 times 22. Turns out to be uh, 286. Let's see why that would be true. All right. How would I normally work out 13 times 22? Now, most people probably do the little multiplication algorithm, which I can't remember. I don't do any algorithms. To me, 13 times 22 is just a geometry problem. It's take a rectangle that's 13 inches by 22 inch inches and try to work out its area. All right, that's fine, but the number 13 is too hard. Um, I'd much rather think of 13 as 10 and 3. Then um, I can break the rectangle into parts like yonder. In fact, 22 is much better to think of that as 
uh, say 20 and 2. So if I break the rectangle into four pieces, and now I've got four very easy computations to do. Um, 10 times 20 means the area of this piece is 200. Uh, 3 times 20 means the area of 60. Whoops. And 10 times 2 means the area of this piece is 20, and the area of this piece is 6, 3 times 2. So the area, the multiplication 13 times 22 is going to be 200 plus 20 and a 60 and a 6. 286. In fact, I can even see with my nice little area model that diagonals make sense to me because the diagonals are giving me units of tens, uni units, units of tens, and units of 100. So I can actually see 286. Now, that's how I really do multiplication if I really have to do it by hand. But some people might choose not to bother writing the zeros. If you don't write the zeros, then you have to be a little bit careful. Um, so they probably won't write... Uh, where's my pen gone? Sorry. Get rid of that zero for the 10. Get rid of that zero for the 20. Just write 2, 2 and write 1, 3. Which means I won't be computing 10 times 20. I'll be computing 1 times 2. And I'll just get 2. I won't be computing 10 times 20. I'll be counting, computing just 1 times 2 is 2. Uh, 3 times 20, not anymore. It's going to be 3 times 2 is 6. Get rid of that zero. And 3 times 2 over here for the units really is 6. And when I add up the diagonals, I'm really not going to, not going to see 80, I'm going to see 8. I'm not going to see 200, I'm going to see 2. So if I just don't bother writing zeros, just write the individual digits, I'm actually okay. I actually save myself a bit of writing. And I will, get the, I will see these numbers appearing. And as long as I remember that the diagonals are corresponding to the units, the tens, and the hundreds, I will see 200, 80 tens, 8 tens, and 6. 286. All right, that's fine. So maybe my rectangle method is totally fine, fine. If I choose not to bother writing the zeros, just realize the diagonals that correspond to the tens, the hundreds, and so forth, then I'm still fine, and it all makes sense to me. But here's the kicker. What I do here, which makes perfect sense, is actually exactly the same as what's going on over here with the line method. Because what did I do? Here I wrote 2 and 2. I didn't bother writing 22. I just wrote 2 and 2. That's what I did over, over here. I didn't bother writing 10 and 3. I just wrote 1 and 3. That's what I did over here. So I did it on the other side, 1 and 3. Um, these intersections, what are they doing? When I computed this intersection, I got value 2, which is 1 times 2, which makes sense. It's one line intersects with two lines. It will indeed give me two intersections. There's that 2. Uh, over here, six intersections comes from three lines and two lines. Well, three lines intersect with two lines. It will indeed give me 3 times 2, namely six intersections. In fact, these intersections are really just all the multiplications that I did over yonder. And when I add up the intersection diagonally, it's doing exactly the right thing. It's adding up what I want to do, add up the diagonals. And I kept the places in my final interpretation was 286. I realized that this diagonal sum was the units, this diagonal sum was the tens, and this diagonal sum was the hundreds, 286. So actually, this line method is really just this rectangle method, which is really my rectangle method, 10 and 3, 20 and 2, translated in a strange, curious way. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to leave you with one mystery, which is a little bit of homework exercise for you, because there is yet another complication about this line method that I've been holding out on you. What I'd like you to do for homework uh, for this video is try to work out the following. So let's do a normal one first. Um, can you work out, say, 231 times 12 by the normal method? And then the, my homework question to you is work out 102 times 13,011. 13, and I'd like you to work out 1,010 times 2,080, or was that, was that, no, it's more than that, 200,080. So what happens to the line method with these ones? Can you do it? All right, lots of fun. So if you go to lulu.com, www.lulu.com, I'm being pretty bold now, you will, if you search under thinking mathematics, you'll find this book, Volume 1, with Chapter 1 in it, of course, that has all this great weird multiplication going on, if you'd like to learn more. All right, thanks so much.